my name is Kylie Arnold. I'm an accounting product marketing manager with Lee Squarey. That's just a super long title to say I use my CPA and 20 plus years of accounting experience from public accounting to external reporting to accounting for the private sector in various industries to help our marketing department and company better understand the accounting behind our lease accounting solutions and other complex accounting products. Thank you so much for downloading the Ultimate Lease Accounting Guide. This guide covers the new ASC 842 guidance in an easy to understand format with step-by-step -step examples. Inside, we've included these examples, journal entries, and disclosures that focus primarily on the lessee side of lease accounting. And now that you have this valuable information in your hands, we're going to spend the next several weeks showing up in your inbox with educational videos, quizzes, and more information to support you as you make your way through the Ultimate Lease Accounting Guide. At the end of this course, you'll receive a certificate from Lease Query honoring your ASC 842 expertise. So let's dive into why lease accounting had to change. Almost all companies have leases for things like office space, heavy equipment, or computers. Leasing allows companies to use an asset without tying up too much of their cash and to keep their equipment up to date. It's part of standard business practices and is unlikely to go away regardless of any of the accounting rules. However, some companies were using leases inappropriately. Lease accounting changes were made in response to accounting scandals surrounding Enron and WorldCom, where synthetic leases were used to hide lots of debt from investors. So new accounting rules bring the vast majority of leases onto the balance sheet making a clear financial picture for investors, but also making huge changes to companies' financials upon implementation. To understand why lease accounting needed to be updated, think back to the differences between the balance sheet and the income statement you likely learned in your very first accounting classes. The balance sheet represents an organization's financial position as of a point in time. The income statement, on the other hand, shows an organization's financial performance over a period of time, typically for a month, quarter, or year time period. Under ASC 840 and the other legacy accounting standards, leases were broken up into two categories, capital and operating. Capital leases were required to be reported on the balance sheet, along with the asset for which they were financing the purchase or the use of. But operating leases were not required to be on the balance sheet. Most of your straight rental agreements for property and other types of equipment were only shown as rent expense on the income statement. An entity, an entity may have had multiple agreements which require rental payments, both significant and insignificant, but those obligations would never show up on the balance sheet. So there's nothing nefarious about this practice. Financial statement users and stakeholders were aware that operating leases were only present in the income statement. However, in order to get a clearer view of companies' total obligations and total assets, rating agencies, investment bankers, and other financial statement users would make adjustments to the statements they were analyzing to take into account the amount of operating lease obligations an entity had. Attempting to ensure that a company with lots of operating lease commitments and then few capital lease commitments did not have an unfair or unfounded advantage over a company with the opposite, more capital lease commitments than operating lease commitments. Sounds reasonable, right? A way to try and be equitable, compare apples to apples. Well, unfortunately, each organization had their own methodology for adjusting the financial statements. There was no consistency. So enter the new lease accounting standards, a way to increase the transparency of all financial statements, but also increase the consistency. So we move from lease accounting under ASC 840 to lease accounting categories, capital and operating, with capital leases always recorded on the balance sheet and operating leases only accounted for in the income statement to lease accounting under ASC 842 still using the dual category methodology, but with these changes. Capital leases will be accounted for the same way, but with the nomenclature change. They will now be called finance leases because all leases are now capitalized 
or added to the balance sheet. The finance will be the lease category that is more like a finance purchase. Meanwhile, operating leases will still be called operating leases, but under ASC 842, we will now record a lease liability and a right of use asset for an operating lease. Ultimately, these changes solved several problems for the financial community. They were able to reduce the opportunities for organizations to manipulate lease agreements for specific outcomes. They provided a complete view of a company's financial picture to fi financial statement users and stakeholders and then also remove the need for analysts to force an apples to apples comparison. Lastly, as you're all wondering, yes, you have to comply, and yes, you have to comply now. Organizations that are not already following ASC 842 for lease accounting, that is mostly private and nonprofit organizations, have to comply with ASC 842 for their, fisc for their first fiscal year after December 15th, 2021. And that date has already passed. So the fiscal year you are now in, or possibly about to start if you're in October or November year end entity, this is the year you will need to be compliant with ASC 842. No other delays are coming. In December 2021, the FASB voted unanimously to enforce the 2022 effective date for all private companies, which means starting January 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2022 is the first year for all other folks to become compliant with ASC 842. And that's all for the first video in our Ultimate Lease Accounting series. Stay tuned for our next lesson where we'll give a full introduction to ASC 842 and define both a lease and an embedded lease. Also, please be sure to visit leasequery.com for CPE opportunities, articles, and other educational resources. Finally, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to Lease Query on YouTube and hit the notification bell for future updates.